It's the Wondering Wizard, and uh, today I want to talk about a couple of events that are going to be going on this month, as well as the event that we're going going through right now. Right now, we're in the middle of the Brilliant Event Part Two, which focuses on the younger Dumbledore. The Brilliant Event Part Two runs from the fourth to the eleventh, and is still ongoing as of this video. It focuses on the younger younger Dumbledore, and I wonder what the Calamity is trying to tell us because the Part One of the Calamity focused on the older Dumbledore while part two is definitely the younger. Right now, we're pretty much where Harry went back and used the pensive to look into Dumbledore's earlier memories to try to figure out who Tom Riddle was. I'm trying to figure out why uh, we're getting a lot of, or why the, the Calamity is focusing mainly on Dumbledore uh, and what that actually means. Uh, for the up and coming events. However, this is the part in the video, in the movie, um, where Harry confides in, and Dumbledore actually shares some of his older memories in the pensive uh, to help Harry try to figure out who exactly Tom Riddle was and what type of person he was. So, in a way, in a roundabout way, yeah, this, in, this involves uh, Voldemort, more like his origin. Uh, story, but in reality, the 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 calamity is actually focusing on uh, the whole entire event around uh, Dumbledore for some weird reason. Still, don't understand exactly why. Part two of the event has been pretty easy so far. Um, I wonder. I still wonder exactly what the calamity means or what it's trying to uh, tell us. The only annoyance I've found so far was the dark detectors. For some reason, I never could find dark detectors. I know that they sometimes drop when, uh, in foundables that you find, as long as well as uh, Gringotts coins and other items. But it's very rare. Um, it, whenever we come ac across any of the brilliant events, uh, lately it seems like it's always asking for a dark detector, two dark detectors on the end, which I I never have, and it freaks me out all the time. And it's actually a thing that I get hung up on all the time leaving me almost to the end of the event before i'm able to finish the uh the brilliant event book day event was through the fifth to the seventh where we had access to um two dragons in our region and in the other region uh, asia and pacific had access to the other two dragons and the other two eggs i was able to prestige one time um the dragon page which was pretty awesome for the oddities and uh for some weird reason i wanted to highlight that the more um severe uh dragon uh was actually more common than the less severe dragon which was the green wealth dragon and i couldn't understand exactly why uh for some reason i was running into uh the other dragon a heck of a lot more and uh it was pretty interesting i got done with that dragon super fast uh, the port keys were one kilometers, and I was really appreciative for, about that because I was able to get through all those uh, all those port keys pretty much at the last minute. Um, I I pretty much co uh, completed why well, I completed a book day event on the last day with I think like two hours to spare. The theme of the book day was Pride Wizards tournament, um, and it was pretty fun going through and reading Harry Potter with the kids uh, during the event. And pretty much, you know, going back to the roots of why I actually fell in love with Harry Potter to begin with, and hopefully showing my kids my appreciation for the books and uh, sharing my experiences with the books as well as any stories that I've um, that I've had in the past. We had like this really cool chat session um, that that came from reading the Harry Potter books. And you know what? I think instead of waiting for book day, I'm gonna probably do this like bi-weekly or probably once a month because it's really awesome just to, like, the things that I've I've read or reread that I forgot was even a thing in the books um, was pretty interesting the crazy in love event is coming right around the corner 
and it's gonna be on the 11th through the 13th, uh, leading into the second Brilliant event in this single month. So we've had, what, four Brilliant events in the same month, which is insane. Usually we get one Brilliant event a month. Uh, so all this potential for you guys to hurry up and grab those green books and finish your 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 training in, in whatever you're in. Um, I feel like I'm definitely, with all the books that's been throwing at my face, the green books that's been throwing at my face, um, I'll be able to finish my professors, even me slacking off. <laughs> I'll be able to finish all the things needed with green books by the end of this month, which is really exciting. So hopefully next, going into next month, we're gonna get access to the second book. And that's what I'm really excited for. The new skills that'll be coming out potentially and more spells that we'll have access to uh, once the second book. The Crazy in Love event highlights two of, uh, two of the teachers from Hogwarts. And I'm really curious as to why they picked those two particular people. They picked Minerva McGonagall and they picked Sivorous Snape. So these two people um, actually have tragic love uh, background love stories. Um, M Professor McGonagall, as you know, she was born with a muggle father and a uh, wizard mother, uh, whom of which she ha she hid the fact that she was a witch for a long time. Um, and then once she confessed to uh, her husband, it created a lot of turmoil because he did not like to lie. So Minerva grew up watching that happen. Um, I'm pretty sure there was lots of fights, there was turmoil, turmoil in the household, and then also they were forced to hide their, their, witch, their, their wizard abilities. So when it became too tough for them to hide it, the mother then came out and told the father that she was in fact a witch and that her kids will be going to Hogwarts. Minerva really instilled in her like the pain and, and the hardship that they went through just for being wizard. When it came time for her to fall in love, I think the name of the guy that she fell in love with, which, which was a muggle by the way, his name was Dougal. And she ended up, right before the, 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 the proposal to get married, she ended up choosing choosing to teach instead, to, to uh, pursue her, her, her wizarding education over her love for Dougal. I'm pretty sure it hurt her, but that decision came from um, all the turmoil that she grew up with, not wanting to have to hide her abilities not wanting to have to grow up where her kids would have to hide their abilities and pretty much repeat what she went through with her parents. So later on, uh, McGonagall actually marries again. Um, I can't remember the name of the person who she ends up marrying, but he ends up passing away after getting poisoned by one of the plants that he was taking care of, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. And she's, she's just forced back into, she just dives right into schooling. So like her, her whole love history is just very tragic. Um, the fact that we, we see her at Hogwarts, she's been, at that time that we see her at Hogwarts, she's already been through so much and uh, has to bond with, with Dumbledore. Which is interesting that we're seeing Dumbledore's uh, event happen right before McGonagall and Professor Snape, considering how close uh, they were together to each other. Sniver Snape, I believe everyone knows the love story behind uh, Snape and what he went through. He ended up having to watch the love of his life get married, have a child, and then had to teach that child and protect that child as he grew up. So I'm I'm pretty sure his backstory is really tragic. When when we finally find out at the end of the series that Snape was only acting towards him, him that way, not because he hated him, but because he loved him as well, I think that hit me so profoundly. Like when Harry just assumed and and you know that that Snape was just this evil guy that he had to be working with the uh, the the dark the dark wizards. He had to be with Voldemort, um, and all this time he was just doing what Dumbledore asked of him. Um, he was protecting Harry as much as he possibly could because he loved his mother so much. And that whole story is just tragic, just completely tragic. So the fact that they have both. Snape and McGonagall as the uh, February in in the February event for uh, brilliant event for uh, the love the love theme. It's just ironic to me that they would they would pick those two, considering that they are both 
the pinnacle or the poster child for what heartbreak really is. So as we wrap up the book day event, um, I just want to say that I'm really excited about everything that's going on this month and I'm keeping busy. It's been really awesome. The weather hasn't been really permitting, <laughs> but uh, we're working around it. I'm super excited. Keep this up. This has got me completely into the game, back into the game again, full speed. Um, and I can't wait to uh, see what we have in store for next month as well. It seems to me that they're picking up pace just like Pokemon Go has been picking up pace. And that's been a completely incredible. Can't wait to see what comes next. So that's it for me, guys. You guys have a good one. I love your faces, and I will see you in the next one.